Okay. So talk to me about Sorene. surface and we have this natural water flow coming out um, and a lot of times how that happens is we have an aquaclude. What is an aquaclude? Remember when we talked about that yesterday? Okay, so it prevents water from moving forward or moving down, right? So if I have my saturated layer so here comes my saturated layer and I come out to the, into the where I'm at the edge of the hill. And then here's my aquaclude preventing that water from moving forward. Where's that water going to go once it comes out here to the outer edge? Yeah, it has no choice but to simply run out. And we have these natural springs. I start running down the face of the hill. Again, you know, it's just an appreciation of understanding about how these things work and how cool things are. You really get to experience them firsthand. I know it's hard to say when you have to sit in the classroom and don't have a lot of opportunities to go and see stuff. But if you ever do get a chance to go to the Grand Canyon, I highly recommend that you do that. You get to travel through close to a billion years of Earth's history. You get to see dinosaur tracks. You get to see a lot of sea creatures left of the rock. And all of this on a four hour mule ride, which in itself is an experience. Just make sure you're the second person in line. You don't want to be the last. Going down isn't so bad, but those poor donkeys, they work out quite the sweat coming back up the poor yeah. one side. And when that tail starts to lift, <laughs> it's not pleasant. And like some people in the room, when they eat a lot of wheat, they get a little flatulent. So here you are, the last person in line, Everybody's mule in front of you has had their tail raised, and you just keep walking through it. But it really is an experience in itself. And one of the experiences I had on this is that as we're walking down, and you know, my sister and I went on this, and she caused a complete nerve, but that's fine. So we're going down, and it just was really cool. I mean, we're about halfway down the canyon, and it hasn't rained in three weeks. Dry as can be. But yet, out of the side of the Grand Canyon, about halfway down, is this little trickle of water draining down the face of the canyon. And then there's like probably like 10 of them right in a the row, each one seeping down the side. So again, what that tells me is I can tell right then and there, that's where the water table's at, where those springs are. And all that stuff above, there's no water. So now we're in that saturation layer that's coming through at the end of the Grand Canyon and draining down the side of the canyon. Kind of something cool to, to realize. So there's a lot of neat geology that's in our country. And I definitely you know, encourage you to go out and see what's around us. You know, leave the state of Indiana, definitely get out of the Fort Wayne area. Go out and visit cool places. Never starts that enough. Oh, hey, what's another cool place we can go visit for geology? Oh, yeah, let's go to the super volcano. Let's go to Yellowstone. Let's talk about geysers. What is something in your house that you think would be representative of a geyser? Water. 
No. Why do you somewhat close? But no. A teapot heating up. So just like a teapot, you put it on the stove. Where does that heat come from? The stove, the fire. Okay, so we think about a geyser. Where's all that heat coming from? Stove. Coming from the heat. Okay, it's coming out of the magma. Okay, so the magma starts to heat up the water. Like I say here. So here comes our heated water. Now, I'm not sure if you guys saw that. Well, back up just a little bit. Okay, so water seeps into the geyser tube. Doing the fractures. You see all the fractures here in the rock? Okay, so we're seeping that up. Water is heated by nearby igneous activity. So again, that's the magma chamber. Heating up that water. And when water gets heated, what does it do? It rises and it expands. Yeah. What do we notice right here? Oh, it's really tiny. Okay, it's really narrow. So now that water wants to come rushing out, but it can't because it's caught right here. So what builds up? Pressure. Pressure. So we start building now. Okay, so we got the pressure building. Now our superheated water expands, pushing some water out of the vent. Okay, and when that happens, now basically we have this rush, and this is one of those things that's kind of hard to understand. It's a give and take. As you are releasing this pressure, you're now opening up space for more air to come in. What that actually does is it pushes the water out. As this water is coming out here, you're allowing air to come in, and it's a sudden release. Um, for example, take a balloon and blow it up. You know what? We'll come back to that. I'll show you that in here in a minute. All right. So then eventually all that pressure is released. And we now have a full-fledged geyser. There it goes. All right, so that's going to end our lesson for today. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.